Okay, <clears throat> so today uh, we'd like to uh, look at the types of bonding that occur in crystalline matter. Uh, so the first one we've already covered, uh, and that is covalent bonding. Uh, and that's a fairly subtle type of bonding. Uh, we started out there. The second that we want to discuss today is ionic bonds. Uh, then there's also metallic, which we'll get to, and finally there is also a molecular bonding, uh, which relies on dipolar forces, dipole-dipole interactions, van der Waals, and hydrogen bonds. But first, uh, <clears throat> ionic bonding. So an example is just uh, sodium chloride. The sodium, um, if we want to I write down the electronic configuration uh, is such we have a single uh, electron out in the 3s orbital uh, but the um, the first two shells are completely filled and there's one lone electron in it hanging out in the 3s state the chlorine on the other hand has this uh, electronic configuration and uh, there we have filled the first and second shells uh, and uh, the third shell is almost filled there's only one electron missing in the 3p orbitals so what we could do is uh, transfer that electron over and so then uh, the sodium would be positively ionized Okay, and uh, that positive ion would have a completely fi filled shell. And uh, the chlorine would also have a now a completely filled shell, third shell. Both have filled shells and uh, both ions uh, are quote unquote happy with that. So <clears throat> the question then is uh, what would be the potential energy of this configuration? So sodium has given up its outermost electron and given it to the chlorine. The cl chlorine really wanted it, and the sodium, um, that 3s uh, electron was only loosely bound to the sodium, so it is happy to give it up. What is the potential energy of such a situation? Well, we have a, an effectively pos a singly positive ion in proximity to a singly negative ion, and uh, let's say the separation is A, and we can immediately write down what the potential energy of this configuration would be, namely it's just minus K E squared over A. So very simple. But uh, let's take the next step. What about a lattice? So uh, salt, a salt crystal. Well, it's an ionic crystal, so I have uh, say starting out with a positive ion at the center here surrounded by six negative chlorine ions I'm showing four here but there would also be two more in and out of this plane and then of course we have surrounding that again positive sodium ions and surrounding that negative chlorine ions and so on okay the lattice constant is a what is the cohesive energy or the cohesion of this uh, crystal? So here I'm showing only one sheet, but it's easy to extend it out into the third dimension. All right, so uh, can we estimate the cohesion of this crystal? Well, we can start here uh, with that center configuration, the uh, positive sodium ion surrounded by the six nearest neighbors okay and so the binding energy of just that is going to be minus ke squared over a times six because we have six nearest neighbors the chlorine chlorine uh, negative ions all right so that's that contribution but we can keep going here okay we have that but the next uh, <clears throat> but next would, we would have to look at the second nearest neighbors and those are the um, the uh, 
positive ions shown here. There's four of them that I show uh, in this plane. Okay, They are at a distance of a uh, square root of 2 times a, sort of that diagonal. Uh, but we could also look at this plane, so the perpendicular plane, and the picture would be identical to what I'm showing already here. And so uh, it's sort of the same picture, and we get, therefore, four more second neighbors. And then, of course, we have a third plane that we could look at, namely this plane, and the situation, again, would be the same, and we get four more second neighbors. So uh, there's going to be 12 positive sodium ions at a distance of the square root of 2 times A. And the contribution then to the binding energy is Ke squared over square root of 2 times A, all times 12, um, <clears throat> because we have 12 of these. All right, are we done yet? Uh, you can guess the answer, no way. Because now we want to go out to the third neighbors, which are, again, negative chlorine ions. Here, I'm going to draw it in perspective. Okay, so uh, you can think of um, the this particular uh, these, this particular sodium. Okay, then I can draw the nearest chlorine, and they're distance A away, but what about those, okay? Yeah, that is another uh, <coughs> chlorine uh, ion uh, at the sort of opposite corner of that cube, and so that distance is the square root of 3 times A. Now, how many of those ions are there that are that far away from the center ion? Well, you can sort of count them all up. Uh, basically, we uh, get all of those coordinates. You know, let's say the central sodium ion is at the origin, then all of these coordinates would uh, be a square root of 3 times a away from the origin. And so there's eight locations here. And therefore, the contribution to the binding energy is 8 over minus 8 over the square root of 3 times quantity ke squared over a. Why is it a minus sign? Because it's an attractive energy. OK, we're still not done because we now can go out even further. So there are, are those that I have now uh, marked in dark green that are a distance of square root of 5 times a. And even closer than that, there are the uh, positive sodium ions at a distance of 2 times a. Then we can think about how many there are. In this case, there are 6. And so we get a contribution of 3 times the quantity Ke squared over A. Um, for the dark green ions, we get um, uh, 24 of them. Okay, there is 8 of them that I've drawn here, but that's only in this xy plane. We could also look at the xz plane and the yz plane, in both of those planes, there would again be 8. And so we get 8 times 3 is equal to 24 such ions at a distance of the square root of 5 times 8. OK, and so uh, this keeps on ad infinitum, of course. So far, we have the following result. We have, uh, I can factor out a minus k e squared over a. And I'm left then with this particular sum. OK, so yeah, those are the, the terms that we've actually looked at. But the sum would continue. It's an infinite sum, of course. And so um, maybe surprisingly, this series does converge. And it converges to a number minus ke squared over a times 
alpha, where alpha is called the, the Modulon constant. Okay, so someone actually, you know, computed that convergence, and uh, we get um, an uh, one point seven four seven five six five for this particular crystalline structure. Okay, and so uh, we did all of this from the perspective of a single sodium ion at the center of our diagram, but of course that ion was arbitrarily chosen. It's an arbitrary ion, and so uh, now we have to repeat it for all the other ions. So what is the total cohesive energy of the crystal? Well, uh, we have that result from before, and uh, we might think we need to multiply by n, and that's true because we have n ions in the crystal, but we also then need to divide by 2 so that we don't overcount, okay? Because each pair should only be counted once. Okay, so this calculation gets us to within about 10% of the experimental value. So we're pretty good. Uh, we're, we get pretty close. So the uh, other examples um, here are, would be KF, uh, calcium chloride, manganese oxide, and calcium fluoride. And there's many other such ionic crystals. Uh, what are their properties? Well, they're all good electrical insulators for one, okay? There's uh, no free electrons roaming around. They're good insulators. They have um, typically high melting points, speaking to fairly high cohesive energy. Okay, and they tend to be brittle and fairly hard crystals.